I greet you all in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a joy for us to come together in His presence and worship our awesome God. I would like to thank our pastor and the church for giving me this wonderful opportunity to come and minister this morning. It is my prayer that the Lord will minister to us and bless us in a very special way. As the psalmist says, Lord, open my eyes that I may see the wondrous things in your law, in your word. May that be true. May the Lord will open our eyes this morning and so that we will see him the way we ought to see him. Before I begin speaking to you this morning, I would like to ask you to pray with me, please, so that the Lord will be among us. Dear Lord, it is not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Dear Lord, you know our needs and we are your people. You delight in dwelling among your children, Lord. We plead with you this morning, come and meet with us. Father, we are not here to listen to Matt's voice, Father, we want to listen from you. Bless us with your word. May your spirit powerfully move among us. May this time be profitable to our spiritual life and having an encounter with God. To this extent, we submit and surrender ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My beloved in Christ this morning, I would like to take this topic, the goodness of God's creation. The goodness of God's creation. In Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 26, Isaiah the prophet says, Lift up your eyes, look to the heavens. Who created all things? He who brings out the starry host one by one and call each by name because of his great and mighty power, not one of them is missing. My beloved in Christ, it is a fascination for me to study on creation because the moment you start studying creation, you will fall prostrate before the awesome God. As the word says, who is unto our God, who is awesome in his holiness, fearful in praise, working wonders. Yes, when you look around the creation, it fascinates you, it brings you to your feet, surrendering, submitting, falling at the feet of the Lord Almighty. Something, you know, it's really shattered me when I read the facts in science. It says, you know, the earth takes 364 days, 5 hours and 48 minutes and 45.1 seconds to get around the sun. If the sun travels slightly slower than the speed, the whole earth would be consumed or just cease to exist. And then the moon, if the moon can just come a little closer to earth, or earth going closer to the moon, and what happens, the mountains will erode and the waters will flood the whole earth, the whole earth, would be submerging one of the miles deep. Just a little bit of change in creation or the natural law will bring a disaster into the whole world. My beloved in Christ today, I am not here to prove the existence of God or to prove the creation of God. Rather, I would like to toe the line as the Bible teaches in the living God created the world. That means Bible doesn't not try to prove to the world that he, God has created the universe. Rather, he takes it for granted. God is the creator. We are his people. My beloved in Christ, people sin sensitivity cannot disregard God. People disbelieve cannot nullify God's existence. God is not there. This morning I would like to bring two things before you. One is the divine disclosure by the heavenly narrator. A divine purpose is divinely portrayed. And divine 
and basement and disturbing career. Divine disclosure by heavenly narrator. My beloved in Christ, creation is a divine, independent act of God. The creation is not through mutation. Creation is not to emanation. Creation is not out of imagination and fascination or human invention. If creation is a divine act of God, creation is the divine independent act of God. My beloved in Christ, creation that declares the glory of God. Creation is the declaration of God's glory. Creation is the affirmation of God's story. That's what in you know, Psalm 91 says, Heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of His hands. When you look at the creation, it reveals God. The goodness of creation is, it reveals God, my friend. Here the man of God comes and shares this information with us. Moses, the man of God. As you come to Genesis chapter 1 and 1, and we all know that verse very clearly, and I want you to go and preface chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, this is the account, Genesis 2, 4, it says, this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In Gen you come to Genesis 1, 1 and 6. Read in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Here the man of God, the author, he comes and says, you know, it is the Lord who has created the heavens and the earth. How do you know? When you ask the question, Moses, yes, we want to ask you, how do you know? And he immediately comes and says, it is not I have come up with, rather the Lord has told me. He has called me and he has shared this information with me. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 3, the Lord says, Moses went up to God and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you want to say to the people of Israel. It is not my information, says Moses, rather it is the direct information that comes from God. When God gives a direct information to me, there is no misinformation, nor confusion, rather it is a revelation from heaven. It is God who takes initiative to reveal himself before the whole world, before his people. My beloved in Christ, it is God's initiation. It is a direct communication. You know, you know it's an independent representation. When you think of Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 10 says, There was no prophet risen ever in time like Moses who has seen God face to face and also that who has done great and marvelous miracles among his people. When you think of God of the Bible, when you think of the God of the Bible, is he able to create this beautiful and marvelous, wondrous, complex world? What does the Bible say? Yes, he is and he is able. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 7, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about they are suffering, so I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a glorious, a good and spacious land. My beloved in Christ, what the Lord says to the whole world, I am not the God of this world. I am not the God of this, gods of this world. I am the Lord and there is no other. And the Lord says, I am the Lord who sees, who hears, who asks, who interacts, who intervenes, who saves, and he comes down. My beloved in Christ, yes. You know, and he has come down and he performs everything before the very eyes of the people. What happens? Our God does rest. Let's see splits. One from heaven, water from the rock, cloud of fire, cloud of cloud over there. Now Moses sitting with God on the mountaintop, Mount Sinai. God was there. My beloved in Christ, I tell you, 
when you look at the creation that reveals the glory of God, it reveals the glory of God. I tell you today, today people are so ignorant of God because we have divorced ourselves from creation. I tell you what again, we have divorced ourselves from creation. And let me ask you, when was the last time that you have just gone out? Look at the sky, star, sun, moon, felt the breeze or trees, and joy our creation. My beloved, you know, we have caught up with the world, running after and skelter, lost all our spiritual sensitivity. We have divorced ourselves from the creation so that we do not know God today the way we ought to know Him. We do not God, we do not know God in a way that we have and we ought to know Him. My beloved in Christ, that is the reason when Gladstone, the former Prime Minister of England, he was asked, what is the one person that you have for this generation? He did not any, you know, taking time, rather he said it. I have only one kind you know, concern for this generation. That is the fear of God dying in the heart of man. The fear of God dying in the heart of man. People, they do not know God. That is the reason today we see there is no fear of God. And people think they can do anything in the name of God. They can do anything in the presence of God. They can do anything in the church of God. They can do anything and get out. But below the Christ, when you look at the creation, Look at the trees. Look at the, you know, anything and everything. It reveals God's glory. God's glory. A divine, a divine disclosure by the heavenly narrator. My beloved and precious today, the creation that reveals the glory of God. God comes alive before us. The second one is the divine purpose that's delightfully portrayed. Why the Lord has created the world and created us? There are twofold purposes. One is the Lord created for us, created this whole world. The creation stands for his glory. The second one is the creation. You know, when the Lord created, the creation must worship him and serve his purpose for his glory. My beloved in Christ, that's what he says in Isaiah 43, 6. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and made. There is an absolute spinal authority. Now God create, creates everything. As the Lord created everything, the Bible says in Genesis 1, 31, God says, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. You know, the Lord creates everything, and objectively, he, objectively, he looks at the creation, and he's happy and satisfied, and says it is well and good, and happy. But the Lord in Christ, the simple truth is teaches God is in absolute control over his creation. God is in absolute control over his creation. In Psalm 115, verse 3 says, Our God is in heaven and he does whatever pleases him. You know, in Ephesians 1 11 says, In him we are also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with his purpose of his will. He works out everything in conformity of his will. He has a purpose. He is carrying out, my friend. God is in absolute control over everything. He rules and he reigns. When Jesus Christ came into this world, he said, I am not of this world. You know, just, you don't, you can't confide me with the world and above it. And he defies the natural law when he was born. He was born of a virgin. He defies the natural law in his death. You know, he says it's not for me who wants to be born and dead. Rather, he says, I have the authority to lay my life. I have the authority to take my life after my death. I am walking away from this. In his lifetime, he walks on the water, says, I am beyond natural. 
has the law and I am the creator, I am the giver of law. My beloved in Christ Jesus is above all. He is in absolute control over everything. The absolute control demands an absolute submission. My beloved in Christ, if you know the friction of God and His power and His glory and His majesty and His holiness, it demands a complete submission because He is the ultimate authority sitting over there. Most of the time we think, you know, the law that happens around, you know, where is God? What happened to him? Is he so on the throne? Is he has some any control over everything? But the Lord of Christ, I tell you, there will be a terrible time. In that very time, the name of Jesus will be lifted up. In that very time, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is God for the glory of the Father. And here comes the Bible and say, Hey, Jesus, I, I have the power to keep you or set you free. Oh, who are you? Are you the king? And the Lord says, Hey, Pilate, what you said, I am the king. You don't have the authority over me. I have an authority over you. My beloved in Christ, we have to understand whatever the different situation and circumstances, whatever happens all around us, but we have to understand God is on the throne. He holds the king and he has the absolute authority over everything. Hallelujah. Hey, church. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is with us. God is with us. He is on the throne. He, has, he holds the king. He is the sovereign one. He is and he alone. But Lord in Christ, you know, we get to see the divine, the distinct unity. The distinct unity. How do you get to see the power of God being exhibited in creation? God says that there be light and there was light. You know, the word of God consists of God's power and wisdom. The wisdom of God conceives, the power of God executes, and the word of God that commands. The wisdom of God that conceives, the power of God that executes, and the word of God that commands, my beloved. It shall be a temporal, but God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. The word powerful, the word power, it denotes energy in the original language. The power means energy. And the Lord says, so is my word that goes from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. Rather, it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I have sent. I sent my word to accomplish the purpose. The word of God is so powerful. My beloved in Christ, the word of God is so powerful and active. In Jeremiah 1 12, the Lord says, The Lord said to Jeremiah, I am watching to see my word is fulfilled. I am watching to see my word is fulfilled. My fellow in Christ, God is on the throne. He has the absolute power and he sends out his word to accomplish his purpose. What is his purpose? The purpose, you know, in Genesis 1 25, God made the wild animals according to their kind, the livestock according to their kind, and all creatures go along the ground according to their kind. God saw it was good. The purpose is clearly defined according to the kind. The same kind, meantime, distinguished from another. Same kind. But beloved in Christ, there is a specific dream. That definite, it's not by chance or by accident. Rather, there is a definite purpose for everything God has created. My beloved in Christ this morning, even as you have seated, you have to understand. God is on the throne. He is in full control. He sends his word to fulfill, fulfill his purpose. And you are the part of the plan, plan as God has created you. God has a plan and purpose for you. Who you are. Young, old, middle-aged. Even your 
already know. Yes, my friend, I tell you, God has a definite specific plan for all of us. There's no time for us to rest and relax and settle down. God has a purpose for you. That purpose leads to prosperity. That purpose will lead you to prosperity. What is that prosperity the Lord talks about? Genesis 1.28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, over every living creature that moves on the ground. God says, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue and rule. And the Lord beautifully says in the scripture, He will make you the head, not the tail. He will make you the head, not the tail. When that happens, my friend, when you serve the purpose of God, when you settle down in the will of God, that happens in the name of God. God tells you, you could be the head, not the tail. He just doesn't give you just a free flow blessing on you. Rather, He says, when you see, when you see, no, accomplish the purpose of God, when you settle down to yourself in the will of God, all that happens. He will change into good and you will prosper wherever the Lord leads you. Even if the Lord plants you in the desert, He says, I will make the water flows, flow, you know, like a river in the desert. Beloved in Christ, creation that reveals the power of God and the purpose of God. Creation that reveals the power of God and the purpose of God. My beloved in Christ, divine placement and discerning prayer. In Genesis 2, 8 and 9, says, Now the Lord God had planted God and the ladies in Eden, and that he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye, good for food. In 3.6, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes, but the best is offered, but they settled for less. The best is offered and settled, and they settled for less. Here we see the Lord created a plant in a garden. We see the best is freely given to them. The Lord has planted a beautiful garden. The Lord placed the man and woman in the garden. The Lord provided them the job. The Lord given them the good and tasty food. God has brought the animals to name them. And also God brought them the companion. The Lord blessed them with the free will, the free of choice. The Lord, the Lord literally brought the whole world at their disposal. God has richly blessed his people inside the garden. You know, what happened? But they said to us, when they heard the words from the enemy, the sugar-coated words, and they, what they saw, thought, felt, desired, and they decided to go with the deceiver. What happened, my friend? They had no regard for the one who has freely given them and blessed them. They had no respect for the word who has created the whole world. They had no appreciation for a God who has freely given them to, you know, given them to enjoy. They chose to replace, they chose to replace God with Satan. They chose to replace truth for lie. They chose to replace reality with illusion. They choose to replace blessing with curse. They choose to replace peace with suffering. They choose to replace life with death. Church, you have to be careful. Because outward attraction may not guarantee inward satisfaction. Reading the intention is more important than verbal expression. Settling for the momentary pleasure may rob you for lasting treasure. Life is a matter of choice. Life is a matter of choice. The choices are made based on the situation, perception, experience, consultation, even at, at times, compulsion. Life 
is the man of choice, my friend. The Lord has blessed with the gift of freedom. But will it Christ time and time again? God's people were unfaithful to his people. You know, the Lord has brought them out with a outstretched hand, with a mighty power, displaying his glory in Egypt. He has performed great, great, and wonderful miracles before the very eyes of the Egyptians. The whole, whole world has seen the glory of God coming down in that very place. Lord led them in the wilderness for 40 years. The Lord fought their battle, took their stand, kept them with, you know, with him, blessed them. And the Lord called Moses, come and be with me. And uh, Moses go to him, go to the Lord and stay with him for 40 days. And what happened? Within no time, within no time, they have forgotten the goodness of God and they have gone back to their idols. They left their God and gone back to their idols. How ungrateful God's people become. How sad God should become. Within no time they have forgotten. They made a conscious choice to make an idol. They left their God. Went after the idols. Went after the Goodness of God, goodness of God's creation, it reveals God, it reveals the purpose of God, it reveals the glory of God, it reveals the blessings of God. Now it has come and given to make your choice. What will be your choice? How soon has this read as God speak? When God has blessed us so much, called us from darkness into glorious light, given us everything so freely. How soon we forget our God. How soon we become ungrateful. How soon we think everything in the world is so real. At the end of the day, we know we are meeting the end. Who will you serve? Who will you follow? What is your choice? This is the question. I'm going to ask you. What will be your choice? As a servant of God, I plead with you. As a church, I plead with you. As God's servant, I come to you. I say, who are my Shall we join the chorus to Joshua? I and my family will serve. I and my family will serve. Lord, I will follow you. The Father, I will give myself completely. How great and awesome you are. How powerful, how mighty you are. How glorious, how holy you are. Yet I will submit to myself. I will serve you. I will follow you. I choose consciously to give myself to you. Shall we never be moved? Shall we never be moved? We come to you. You are a God of creation and the Lord of history. You are a God who delights in dwelling among your people. You are a God who speaks. And Father, this morning we will hear you all speak to us. Thank you for moving among us and blessing us to you. God, give us grace, open our eyes to see you. You and the purpose that you have for us, and the power with which you exit you, that purpose, that prosperity that has come to your word. May God will be our portion, Father, may our commitment will be so pleasing to you this morning, along with your servant Joshua, we say, I am my own.
Pastor Vivian Sutton Farmer. Thank you. We give you all the glory. Bless your people. Carry your people. Prosper your people. In Jesus' name. Amen.